Well, it looks like we're ready to start assembling. So let's begin, shall we? We're going to pick a side, any side. Lift it up. And the other side. And we have the two boards that make up the top of our cabinet. If it helps, you can answer your phone. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, estimate how far apart the sides of your cabinet should be. So adjust those ever so slightly. We're going to make sure those are square. Don't worry about it. Just sort of eye them up in the beginning here. And see how the top of the cabinet sits right on top of that little notch that you created? If you need to, you can take a board like the bottom of the cabinet or the one that I'm kneeling on and um, place it down underneath that board to help prop it up, but that shouldn't be necessary because of those notches that you've, you've created. And I'm going to show you how I do this. We haven't actually created the top of our cabinet boards to fit perfectly yet because we didn't want to do that until now because we weren't exactly sure what the distance would be. So measure from the back of that notch to where the plywood ends on the side of your cabinet and that's the measurement we want. That measurement should be somewhere between 12 and a quarter inches and 12 and three quarters inches depending on the measurement that you took. I'm not saying just pick a number in between. I'm saying take the measurement use that measurement to rip your boards to the final width. There's more than one way to do this. You can rip each board individually, calculating how much should be taken off one or both. See, that still had a rough edge, so I wanted to, I wanted to cut that off for sure. But another way to do this is to connect your boards together with the dowel pins that we're about to do after this step in this particular demonstration and then send them through the table saw as a unit, side by side. When you're finished with those cuts, your boards all together, side by side, should have the width that you desire. How nice is that? Okay, we're ready to begin again. I have all my little bits and things that I need, my dowel pins. A dowel pin kit is nothing more than um, a small box or bag of wooden dowels, quarter inch uh, diameter. And they can, but not always, uh, come with a bit. And the bit is just a quarter inch diameter drill bit but it has a tiny little point at the tip of it so that it will center itself directly on the spot where you need to drill the hole which is very important when using dowels. So I place the first board and I'm placing the second board on top of that and I'm going to start at one side here square it up. Don't worry about the other side yet until you get over there. Just like so. I'm 
I was doing this to see if there were any other fatal errors or major catastrophes. And uh, everything looks good to go, so I am cleared to continue. <laughs> okay, now that you're at an angle where you can see a little easier what I'm doing, these holes will be pre-drilled at an angle into the side of the cabinet. I mean, we, we could go perpendicular to the board and go straight parallel into the plywood, but I've never thought that was as good of an idea as aiming the bit at a slight angle towards the side of the cabinet. That allows you to to um, drill your hole further in from the end of the top of the cabinet instead of precariously drilling a hole very close to the end of that board, especially if you're working with pine. So that way you're able to start your hole about a half inch in from the end of the board and just drill at a slight angle into the side of the cabinet. Your drill bit will probably enter one of those 1x4s that um, you have for trim pieces. So it'll have a nice good secure hold when that inch and 5 8 screw goes in there. I'm using my countersink bit um, because it allows the screw to go in deeper and if you're using pine your board will probably bust a little bit if you don't use a countersink bit here. So clear out a bit of that material with the countersink bit before you try to put your screw in there. I'm using inch and five eighths screws. And I always do like a tap, tap, tap on the on the um my battery drill trigger so that I don't accidentally drive that screw in so hard that it um, just does something stupid. I'm just very careful that way. I always just gradually insert a screw. And there's two screws in each side of this one board. I know I, I don't think I showed you both screws on the other side, but each of these boards gets two screws at the top and bottom. And be careful when you're inserting these to look on the other side of this board and make sure you're not driving a screw into one of those screws that in your um, side of your cabinet assembly. Make sure that your top of your cabinet is seated well in the side of the cabinet and that they are square to one another. If they're not square, you really should only need to um, adjust it. Well, you're going to have to adjust it at the other end, probably. Otherwise, you will make the other side of the board that you had already fastened, you're going to make that not square. So see how I'm leaning forward to sort of kick over that cabinet one way or another? Alright, we're ready. Got a slight angle into the side of the cabinet. And for our next trick, we're going to join the two top of the cabinet boards. We're going to reinforce them and sort of connect them together with these dowel pins. This bit has a point at the end. It's just a quarter inch drill bit, but it has a point at the end so that it will center itself on the marks that you make with the um, little metal markers. These little bits right here. And I'll show you how these all work. Pretty nifty, very simple. You can use these for a lot of different projects. When you don't want to see a fastener, um, these can be very helpful. And this is how we do it.
we're going to drill three holes in the back of the top of cabinet A. You want to give it a name. And you don't have to measure for these holes, just center them on the back of the board. You want to drill in about half the depth, or slightly more of half of the depth, um, half the length of the dowel pin. Place three holes about 12 inches apart, centered on the on the uh, center of the top of the cabinet board. It's not a rocket science, just pick three spots and drill holes. Now take those little metal markers and place them in. Like so. Make sure you're keeping your boards in the direction um, together the way that you had originally planned to. And those boards fit in there pretty well. It's a good thing. If it's a little tight, that's a good thing. If it's too tight, that's not a good thing because you'll end up making your cabinet go out of square. Now push down on that top board. Now that you have the two boards centered one over the other and in the right spot, press down on that top board so that those pointy metal markers make a mark on that board. There we go. Push. Not too hard, just enough to uh, let them make their mark. And there they are. Now I'm going to give you a better look at the, the marks that I made. That one's good. That one's off center. And this other one is off center. That's no big deal. Just drill the hole in the center of the wood. But make it line up with um, its placement. Just make sure it's at the center of the board. Again, about half the length of the dowel pin, or a little more. Take those markers out. Put the dowel pins in. You can put glue in there if you desire. It's really not necessary. Remove any debris. Place this other board in place. That looks good. Pick up your tools and move back to one side or the other so we can fasten this other board.
have successfully assembled the top of your cabinet. Now we're going to do the back braces, upper and lower. I don't believe I walked you through making the lower back brace. Um, you may have made it out of a piece of dimensional lumber, but that shouldn't have been necessary unless you were making a vertical queen. And of any of the other beds, you should have had enough scrap plywood left over to create your lower back brace. This upper back brace should fit snugly into its position here. Check for square, like so. Now I can't seem to get this angle to close up, but there's a lot of different reasons for that. Perhaps my board's a little wide at that end. Perhaps it's not positioned correctly. Perhaps I'm in the twilight zone. I usually blame it on that last reason. And the same procedure is used to assemble the upper back brace, pre-drill and insert the screws at an angle into the side of the cabinet. Probably isn't necessary to use a countersink bit here, but I must have decided to for some reason or another. Because your plywood here is only half an inch, and you ought to still have three quarters of an inch, or slightly less, room available. So the head of your screw is not going to be sticking out. That's not going to be an issue. Um, but whatevs. Now we need to secure the upper back brace to the top of the cabinet. No need to measure. The spacing of your um, 5 8 inch holes makes pretty good spacing for the screws. It's probably even overkill, but what the heck. This is how I do it. Just line it up somewhere above that hole and center it on that board below and go for it. The bottom of the bottom back brace is 18 inches from the bottom of the cabinet. This will ensure that the bottom back brace clears any um, 
receptacle that's mounted at the standard height of 14 inches to center. So if you're going to lower it for some reason, keep that in mind. You can raise it if you really feel like you need to. But I place all my lower back braces with the bottom 18 inches from the bottom of the cabinet. And you should use the squares I just did to get that measurement accurately. If you're finding that when you first place your lower back brace and it doesn't look like it's going to fit, like it's too short or too long, well then you, you probably just need to adjust the sides of your cabinet. Perhaps, even if they seemed square up at the top, if they were just slightly not square positioned correctly, then um, it, it's not even going to be square with your lower back brace edges. So don't freak out if your first attempt you look, oh my gosh, this looks horrible, I, I did it all wrong. Like, no, just adjust the sides. It'll come together, most likely. And if it still doesn't seem to fit perfectly, then you probably didn't cut your lower back brace perfectly square. But, um, you know, even if you were a quarter of an inch off, you could split that difference and have a sixteenth of an inch gap on each side if you really had to. and um, fasten it in place and it would still work. Don't run to the store and buy new lumber just for that minor error. I'm checking the width of my cabinet to see how well I did. I'm hooking it on the outer edge at this time so I'm measuring it from the outside edge to the outside edge which for this vertical double should be 59 and a half but I've noticed since I started working with Poplar that measurement is a, usually a little over because Poplar boards are a strong three quarters of an inch uh, so that adds up Pre-drill and insert your screws at an angle as before. Now we're moving on to the bottom of the cabinet. I know that I cut this board to the inside dimensions, the desired inside dimensions of the cabinet. I cut this before I actually took the measurement. I asked you to take, to cut this after you took the inside measurement, but um, theoretically, you know, the inside of the cabinet should be, you know, what is on paper, but I explained before how you might have to change it slightly. I'm pretty confident in the way that this cabinet is constructed that my board is already cut to the measurement that it should be. Get all my stuff out of the way. I can see that countersink back there. <laughs> Now you could square your cabinet up at this time a little bit with a carpenter square if you want, but um, you're going to have to do it again later anyway. So Now I'm going to show you how to use a mounting board to secure your cabinet to the wall instead of using toggle bolts. 
toggle bolts are nice because you don't have to look for a stud, but if you're using the mounting board, look for your stud with a stud finder, like so. And when you find it, mount this board. Attach this mounting board to the wall by inserting a screw through it into the studs that you find. Secure this to at least two studs. If you do not use this mounting board and you are using the toggle bolts, then go ahead and install those now. If you don't know how to use these toggle bolts, you will have to learn how to use them by um, perhaps watching a YouTube video. Um, even I did an, a demonstration on Frank Fontana's uh, Down and Dirty DIY show. He has an internet radio program for craftsmen and I did a little segment on that where I just happened to demonstrate how to use toggle bolts for the purpose of installing my beds but I'm not able to do this on this particular wall so I can't demonstrate that for you on this video here and now. I apologize. But I have faith in you. You're going to figure those toggle bolts out. Those are great for a hollow wall or a drywall or an old plaster and lath wall and they are extremely secure. Okay, right now we're removing the lower trim pieces. Remember we didn't glue those to the sides. If you did glue them to the sides because you weren't listening to me earlier, you can use a small L bracket, like a one inch by one inch L bracket or a three inch by three inch L bracket to install the bottom of your cabinet or your floor spacer. But the way I do things nowadays is I remove these trim pieces and I take these screws out so that I can put the bottom of the cabinet down and secure it by screwing into the ends of it from the outside of the cabinet sides. of the bottom of the cabinet should be set back at least an inch from the leading edge of the side of the cabinet. I typically place the bottom of my cabinet an inch and a half from the leading edge of the side of the cabinet. When creating a bed the way that I'm showing you in this video, um, with your mattress rest, situated three quarters of an inch from the end of the platform it's not when you're installing the bottom of the cabinet this piece right here you mustn't set it back any further than um, an inch and a half because one of the benefits of having this piece here and this it's important that this if, if you're using this as a bottom of a cabinet and you and you put the mattress rest on the way that I instructed you to earlier then this piece must be a three-quarter inch thick piece of material so that your mattress rest when your platform pivots in your mattress rest will actually rest on this bottom of the cabinet and that will help keep your entire platform square within the cabinet regardless of any bumps or unevenness in your floor brilliant huh I don't know what took me so long to think of it if you're only using a piece of plywood scrap as a floor spacer, um, just something to brace the sides of your cabinet so they don't kick out at the bottom, then those must be placed back further than your mattress rest. If you did not, if you are not going to fasten your mattress rest three quarters of an inch from the end of the platform, if you're going to make your if you're going to fasten your mattress rest flush with the end of the platform panel, then when you install the floor spacer, you need to make sure that it's far enough back that it clears that 2x4. 
chances are if you have been following me along on this video then you made it the way I showed you how I am currently making the beds which means you'll need this bottom of the cabinet and you'll need to um, fasten your mattress rest three quarter inches from the end of your platform um, which I'm going to show you in, in just a few steps here but we already drilled the hole in the platform for the mattress rest but we haven't ins we haven't fastened the mattress rest to it yet because we just haven't got there yet so stay tuned for the mattress rest Pay attention to what I'm doing here, though. I'm, <laughs> I'm squaring up the cabinet with this um, bottom of cabinet board. This is going to help square up your sides as well as a lot of other um, functions it has. Moving on, we're going to measure our cabinet across at different heights so we become more familiar with what we're actually dealing with here in terms of shape and squareness. You may learn things about your cabinet at this point that maybe you didn't want to know. <laughs> uh, your sides may be slightly bowed, just you know, maybe even a sixteenth of an inch. And most of us really just like things to be perfect. We want it to be exactly the inside width it's supposed to be and exactly the outside width it's supposed to be from the bottom all the way to the top. But that's hardly ever the case that it's actually, I mean, we know nothing's perfect, but we, you know, we usually like it to be <laughs> better than what it is. So I don't want you to freak out about this. When you insert your when you fold your bed up, likely your whole cabinet is going to straighten itself out and it's, it's going to be everything you imagined it would be. So my bed here as I'm measuring it looks pretty good and if you felt like you needed to square it up, uh, you just need to loosen any anchors that you put in, just loosen them just a little bit because they shouldn't be super tight anyway as you're going to pull that upper back brace up against the wall and square it up with your drywall square. If your cabinet is not square, um, you're going to find that out now as we're attaching the headboard shelf with the hinges. Your shelf will scuff and rub up against the inside of your cabinet sides if your cabinet isn't square. So loosen any anchors you have, square up your cabinet, and then tighten your anchors again, but don't make them too tight. That's just not necessary, and uh, you don't want to pull your back brace. If it's plywood, you don't want to pull that up against the wall. If you used a three-quarter thick inch piece of material for the upper back brace, then it won't really matter how tight you make it. Tighten it up if you want. But the anchors are up there, really, just to Keep, you know, keep the whole thing from toppling over, the same reason why you would anchor a tall shelf. But if you're using a standard mattress as opposed to a air mattress or a really thin, very light mattress, the weight of a standard m mattress that's, you know, s even six inches thick or, or thicker, the weight of that being strapped to the inside of the platform is going to actually keep the platform pulled into the cabinet and the cabinet standing as it is as you see it now as I'm working with it um, isn't just going to fall away from the wall for, for no reason so that's what the purpose of the anchors are uh, I think that would be pretty obvious but as I am getting this headboard shelf ready to be hinged to the lower back brace what I did was since the since the headboard shelf should be a quarter inch 
um, shorter than the inside width of your cabinet, which you may discover the actual inside width of your cabinet now. So you're going to need your, you're going to want an eighth inch gap on each side of the headboard shelf. You'll also discover at this point whether or not your lower back brace is level. Um, not necessarily earth level, but level in terms of its 90 degree angle to the sides of the cabinets. I place my hinges 17 inches in from each side. I think that's a good place for them. And just, there's really no good way to explain how I'm doing this. I pretty much eyeball everything. I line up the, there is a, a I know there's a drawing in your packet of, of papers that are in my PDF or printed out plans that sh give you a, a sideways, a side view of the way that this hinge is attached to the back brace and the headboard shelf. But basically, the thinner part of the hinge, I line up the edge of it with the edge of the back brace. But just, just look carefully at what I'm doing, even the way that I push on the back brace, because those flaps are, they have like a plastic spring, and if you don't make that flap part of the hinge, push up against it, or make it behave the same way on each hinge as you install each one, then it's it's hard to explain. You you <laughs> just if you make any mistakes, get yourself some toothpicks and fill the holes. Put a little glue in there and sand it over with a little piece of sandpaper and just try it again in a, in a slightly different spot. I don't really think that you can be taught how to install hinges with a voiceover. But they can be finicky. Again, these are 17 inches in from each side, unless you're working with a horizontal shelf and the, or a horizontal bed, and the vertical twin, I believe, is 10 inches in from each side. But it's not rocket science, just most people can sense where a good place for the hinges would be. What's the matter? Oh, I'm looking at the size. Looking at the size of my bit. You definitely don't want to overkill this portion. Um, you should be using a bit that is somewhat smaller than an eighth inch bit. So every bed's a little different, and so is every back brace or um, headboard shelf. When I when I attached the other hinge, I lifted the board. Well, the board ended up being lifted about a sixteenth of an inch, and I couldn't necessarily have predicted that that would happen. I tried not to let it happen, but it did. So. I just need to make sure that the other side is also lifted a sixteenth of an inch. So I placed a folded piece of sandpaper in there. Typically I try to 
make it so that there is no gap simply because that's the most uniform way to do it and the easiest way to measure it but that's my experience with installing hinges <laughs> now we haven't attached the headboard shelf supports yet because we're not exactly sure where they're going to go but I'm very happy with how my headboard shelf flips up and down without rubbing anything that is your your goal when installing the hinges if your headboard shelf is rubbing on the sides then you either need to trim your shelf back a little bit on each side or maybe just sand it a little bit or adjust your hinges or adjust the sides of your cabinet they it, you take measurements the width of the inside of your cabinet from bottom to top again and see if there's an issue there or you may end up finding that you need to take out your anchors if you have installed them already and bring your bed down and check to see if your lower back brace has an issue if it's crooked if it's not 90 degrees with the side of the cabinet but it's, in it's time to install the headboard shelf supports. Now one might assume that you would take a measurement and install these, these supports at the same place on each side. But if you know anything about wood, it's difficult to find a piece that's completely true and straight. And if you find one that's like that, it doesn't always stay that way. Um, one can only hope. So instead of having a shelf that appears crooked, you can help a shelf appear more straight simply by placing the supports where the shelf seems to want them to be. <laughs> so I could try to take a measurement to find out where this um, shelf is going to end up, but I find this method much easier. I take my square and I place it on the leading edge of the cabinet side. And I do like so. I do that on each side. But don't assume that after you take this, make this mark, I mean, you can measure from the floor and see where it ended up and place a mark on the other side, but don't assume that that's where you're going to want the mattress rest to, the, the headboard shelf rest to be on the other side because it might be off just ever so slightly, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. If it's anything more than a quarter of an inch, then you probably have a really bent headboard shelf and... You know, it's up to you if you want to live with that or not. If you are certain about where this is going to go, you can apply a little bit of glue to the back of the support. I use one inch screws to secure these. You can use three quarter inch screws, perhaps. Um, one inch screws typically do end up poking ever so slightly through the other side, so you may find it necessary to snip off the tip with a pair of clines or side cutters or dikes or something like that. Just, you know, pliers that cut. Now just just screw in one screw after you've aligned this piece with these lines that you've made. And I, it occurred to me that I didn't go through the process of creating these supports. They're just made out of scraps of plywood, but I know you have some left. So this particular piece is an inch and a half by four inches, but you can make it two by three or one by four. Or, you know, whatever. It's just a small rectangular piece of plywood. Don't overthink it. But notice how I just installed one screw first. 
and then the other. I think that's actually a one inch washer head screw. I like them. They just, I think they have a nice finished look. When I first started making these beds, I actually used a Forstner bit um, to create a well, and then I used um, three quarter inch screws, and then I plugged those holes with wooden buttons. So if you like that option, you can do that. So there's that side. Um, remember, I'm going to measure it just to see how close we can get to that on the other side, but if it doesn't look right, if I put that mark over there and I and I bring that shelf to that spot on the other side, it ends up floating or hovering above this other side, then um, I may not use that mark. With some But you do want both supports to be the same distance in from the leading edge of the cabinet, so you're going to need to take that measurement as well. to make sure this actually works out for me before I glue it. Sometimes it can take several attempts to get this right. No scuffing. Don't. That's not bad. It's time to assemble our shelf assemblies. This is the upper shelf. If you haven't already determined which side of this you wish to be on top and which one you wish to be on the bottom, do so now. If you have a piece of material that is your upper shelf that is somewhat crowned for some reason, make that be the upside. I hope that's not the case, but if you've come this far and are discovering that now, then you know, if you're a contractor and you're making this for someone, then please make a new upper shelf that is not crowned. Thank you. If you're a contractor and you're making this for someone else, I hope you do everything as perfectly as you possibly can. Okay, this is a two and a half inch washer head screw. Um, we pre-drilled the holes earlier. If you didn't do that, then do that. Pre-drill the hole before you try to plow through this thick piece of material and get it accurately into the piece behind it. 
I'm going to show you a different angle uh, in a second, in a, in a few seconds. Notice how I'm using my square to square everything up, left and right, forward and backward. You'll see that a little better when we change angles here. Notice how I install the top screw first. Yeah, I always do that. You should do that too. Install the top screw first. And you want to make sure that this board and your bull nose isn't floating. Now see how, because of what I'm on, the material I'm on, um, I can't get these two pieces to get flush. And that's very important. So if you're working on a workbench and it's not, or the floor, you, it needs everything, the surface that you're working on needs to be completely flat. And it wasn't, so I'm going to take that screw out. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to get a piece of material to make a faux floor or a new tabletop to work on. And you can't just put it on one side. You're going to need to put it on both sides because otherwise you know, half of this is going to float. There we go. I'm putting up the other side now. Okay. And see how everything's resting on exactly the same plane now. Find the center of the bull nose and line it up with the center line for your holes. You'll note now if this is square or not. If your bull nose does not want to square up, that's because the butt end of it that's up against the upper shelf is somewhat and somehow cut at an angle and I don't mean I don't mean um, that you didn't cut your board at a good 90 I mean that your saw was tilted to the left or to the right um, I don't know if I can explain it any better but You may be able to use a sander to fix a problem like that. If you're a contractor, you may have to cut a new piece. Or recut the cut an eighth of an inch off of these. Um, but make sure these bull noses don't end up any shorter than seven and three quarters. But there's really no reason why you should have to cut them that short. Whatever you do to one, you have to do to the other, as far as removing length. Okay, now we're doing the waistline shelf. Remember, we used a Forstner bit. You need to do that whether or not you're using wood buttons. For the waistline shelf, you must use a Forstner bit. Um, well, that's not entirely true. You, you could use a countersink, but we already did this. If you were following the video, then this is what you did. If you're using screws with washers, then you would have needed to use the Forstner bit. If you're using washer head screws, um, you would have needed to use the Forstner bit. But if you're using plain old wood screws, then you can use a countersink. But I really encourage you to use some sort of washer head. It's going to make this more rigid. If you're a contractor, use screws and washers or washer head screws. If you're going to use wood screws and countersink them in to your waistline shelf, then you should probably be gluing all these pieces together. And that means you really don't wish to ever take your lorry wall bed apart and move it anywhere else.
I'm not going to fast forward through this part because because I think you need to see all this in real time. I know that was awfully long and drawn out, and we won't watch the next half in full time, but... Well, now you can lay your shelf assemblies on the floor in front of your cabinet, something like this, and you're going to want to try to place them where they're going to need to be. If 
probably won't get it perfect and they're going to shift when you bring the plywood panels over but it'll make your job a lot easier if you get them where they're supposed to be now and if you have built everything correctly to this point this measurement that I'm taking from the end of the bullnose to the end of the rocker should be seven eighths of an inch less than the total height of your wall bed so this is a double which is 78 inches tall minus 7 eighths of an inch gives you 77 and an eighth is that right yeah okay good so that is where these uh that's the measurement that you should have there and you're going to try to line up the bullnose with the rockers as best as you can now you're going to make adjustments after you put the plywood down but it's going to be a lot easier for you if you set the stuff up the best that you can now. That way you're not dragging your plywood all over and scuffing it. Right there where my hand is, that plywood is going to overhang 7 eighths of an inch. You're not going to achieve that just yet, but you should you know, try to. We're not fastening anything yet. It also helps if you make a center mark along the back of your upper shelf and waistline shelf. Which I think I'm doing now, but I should have done it already. So I'm finding the center of the board. That double waistline shelf is 59 and a half inches wide, so I, I know what I think the center should be, but that doesn't mean that's what it actually is. So what you think, because using math, you determine what the center should be, but you need to measure that from each side, and then you find out what the center actually is. Your waistline shelf and your upper shelf will extend beyond your platform panels by approximately an inch and a quarter. It is likely yours will not extend as far, maybe an inch and an eighth because you probably did a lot of sanding and lost some material in the process. It's no biggie. Just center it on your shelf. And by centering the plywood panels on your shelf, you will end up with equal lengths of protrusion on each side. Right now I'm taking my scrap plywood and I'm creating seaming braces. It's such a goofy name. Um, jointing pieces, panel joints. That's what my manufacturer called them. I had these manufactured at one point um, by this company in Indiana and they are fantastic. But, you know, my business is pretty, you know, it's too small for them. So, I enjoyed making them so much, I just went back to making them. <laughs> Not really. Does someone buy my business? No, I'm joking. Okay, so I've just made these panel joints. And I just need two, approximately, yay long, four inches wide at least. Uh, I brought my other panel over as you can see but I haven't fastened anything yet and the good side is facing down right now the good side is facing up for the one that I just flipped over pay close attention to all these things I, I use this procedure to attach the mattress rest because I'm Assuming that most of you are doing this all in a smallish room. So this is the, you're going to take up the least amount of space assembling it using this process. If you have a scrap piece of 2x4, prop up this end like so. Flip this end up like so. We do not want this 2x4 to be flush with the end of the plywood. Erase any thought in your mind 
from anywhere you would have gotten that from. I don't know where you possibly would have gotten that from. But this 2x4 should not be flush with the end of the plywood if you've been building your bed to the specs that I have showed you in this video. If you are using my paper plans, then you'll be doing something slightly different here. Right now I'm measuring the thickness of the poplar board because poplar board is a strong um, three quarters of an inch, but I want to make it the same. I mean, it's three quarters. Don't overthink it. And I made a mark on the edge that was easy for me to see. So I can line up this 2x4 on each side. Now the side that I'm working on right now, the 2x4 will not even come up to the end of that side of the plywood. It's going to come no closer than a half an inch. A half an inch away from that end where my right hand is. And now where both my hands are. A half an inch. That's why I'm trying to push that back a half an inch. From that end. From that side. Excuse me. And then all along here... Okay, I'm finding some sort of center, I guess, to make sure that I end up with that half inch space on each side of my, for both of my panels. Now that I've got the mattress rest where I think it should be, we're going to secure it to the platform panel. We're going to pre-drill the holes into the 2x4 first. And I always like to start at one end to tack it. We'll put a place of screw there first and then pre-drill your other holes. This is another way to check to see if you have it in the right place. But that won't be very useful if that particular side of your plywood isn't straight. The, the side that I just hooked that square onto. And I'm going to insert a screw to tack this other end, but I'm not going to pre-drill or install these other screws now. We're going to do that after we have mostly set up the bed and we know that that 2x4 two two is exactly where it should be. Um, because if that second screw isn't holding that 2x4 in exactly the right spot, we can go ahead and make that adjustment to that one screw, but we won't have to do it to all of them and no one will ever know the difference. Okay, well now it's time to flip over this panel which is a lot easier with two people, but I'm going to do it by myself here to show you that it can be done. And I do it this way because I know that most of you are setting up this bed in a relatively small room. And so all the construction and moving around of pieces is going to take place in this room. So this is the best way to do it in a smaller space. like so and we're not going to attach that other half until we've pretty much put the whole bed together and now line up the two panels the best that you can and now we will joint these two panels together with panel joints or seaming braces as I have called them at one time 
I'm going to see how the mattress rest runs parallel to the edge of these panels. And we're going to get them as square and sh as straight as possible with a carpenter square. Or um, if you have another really straight board you can put up against this, you can do that. And then pinch together the other ends. Try to get the panel as tightly squished together as possible. And if you can't seem to get it as really tight, as tight as you want to, you may want to run a little sandpaper up and down there. Just take a piece of sandpaper in your hand and smooth the edges of these two pieces because any little fibers will create a significant gap that you won't want to see. Now's the time, if you haven't done it already on your workbench previously to this moment, uh, you'll want to measure the overall width of your two panels together. They should be exactly the measurement you were striving to have. So this is a vertical double. These two panels together should be 57 inches. Now, it's likely that over the course of sanding you might have lost some material. So if you have overall um, an eighth inch less than your desired width, that's okay. You'll have a sixteenth inch gap on each side. And if you can live with that, so can I. If you can't live with that, then you're going to have to take your cabinet down and shorten your, um, your, your tops of your cabinets and your sides of your cabinets by an eighth of an inch and you'll have to use new scroll, screw holes at least on one side but that's probably not going to happen you're going to be fine everything's fine um, if your two panels together are too wide if there's over by a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch you're going to want to plane down one of the outer edges of these two panels you don't want to plane down the 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 side of the panels that are making up the seam because they will create a gap no matter how minimal it will be pretty obvious you'll see it and you won't like it so try not to mess with the edges on the panels that are seamed together okay now I'm gonna lay down these panel joints or seaming braces I created these with uh, material that was still left over from these two panels and you ought to have this uh, material available to you as well when you're done cutting all your pieces. If you've created a vertical queen and you've used dimensional lumber for your upper and lower back braces instead of plywood, then you will definitely have um, plywood left over. I am fastening these with three quarter inch screws. You may use one inch screws, but you'll have to use those small number 10 washers, those little guys, to keep this one inch screw from protruding through the front of your panels. Even though these two materials all together make an inch, um, it'll come out the front. You don't want that to happen. When you put these uh, three quarter inch screws in, you're going to want to countersink them, number one. And sometimes when you're s screwing two pieces of material together, the second piece of material will, will be pushed away from the second and you won't get a good tight, you won't get a good tight um, connection between the two. What you may have to do when this happens is just back out the screw a little bit until it comes out of the second piece of material and then screw it in forward again and that will suck the two pieces of material together tightly. And so we've come this far. That panel joint that we're looking at on the left is not has not been pushed all the way to the edge of the platform as you can see. You're going to want to bring it no closer than one inch from the end of the platform because if you do bring it up flush to the top of the platform there you're not going to be able to close your platform completely into the cabinet because that panel joint will, will inter interfere with the top of the cabinet. It'll bump into it there. So don't do that. All right, this next part, I'm not going to lie, it's not easy and it takes a lot of patience and there's really no great trick to it. I don't even have a special process to lay out for you, 
But I can tell you one thing. While I was editing this video, painstakingly for the last two weeks, um, which it has been a total nightmare, I came up with an idea simply by watching myself do this and thinking, why don't I have a better way of positioning the shelf assemblies below the, this platform, which is what we're trying to do now. Um, we're trying to put these shelf assemblies where they're supposed to be under this ginormous platform. And as you can see right now, wh what I'm checking is to see if that shelf is sticking out from beneath the platform one quarter of an inch. And that is the first thing you need to learn about this process is that the upper shelf and the waistline shelf, each end of each shelf should be protruding about, about an inch and a quarter. Um, you may you may end up with only an inch and an eighth sticking out because if you've sanded very aggressively you may have lost overall length to your boards that's okay but try to center it whatever it is so um, if it's an in, an inch and an eighth on one side and an inch and a quarter on another then you want to push it in to get it uh, you know center another thing you should do then is when you're at the waistline shelf place your tape measure underneath and measure to the rocker and you can also center it that way center it if you've got 13 inches um, well that would be with a queen size but regardless whatever your measurement is to the rocker below measuring close to the waistline shelf that is another way to, to find a slightly different maybe an eighth of an inch different uh, to center the shelf assembly below the platform but here's the cool trick that I thought of through measuring you can determine where the rocker, the center of the rocker, should be. Um, the end of the rocker nearest the head of the platform, which is where the mattress rest is, if you can determine where the end of that rocker should be, you can then also determine where you can create a peephole for yourself to look through the platform and find the center of the rocker below. I don't know if you caught all that, but let's, let's go over the basics again. We're centering the, the waistline shelf on the platform. We're going to square up the rockers by using our tape measure to square up the rockers below. The third very, very important piece of information is each rocker should come no closer to the head of the platform than 7 eighths of an inch. And 7 eighths of an inch is exactly where they should end up, actually. Um, no more than that, no less than that. 7 eighths of an inch, right there. That measurement I'm taking right there, I'm checking for 7 eighths of an inch to the end of the rocker. Your rockers may not be squared up with your waistline shelf simply because of the way the screws sucked the rocker in towards the platform or you know whatever. So that's why it's necessary, it's essential to take your tape measure and square up your rockers below. Once you get close, you're going to need to insert one screw somewhere. Um, I usually begin by putting one screw in at one end of the waistline shelf. So I know where I want that waistline shelf to be. And if you take the length of your finished rocker, the way that you made it, um, to the exact length, and then calculate where the center of your waistline shelf would be, plus that 7 eighths of an inch to the head of the platform, which is where the mattress rest is you can determine where that center of the waistline shelf should be and you can draw a line like I just did. And then you can calculate where the end of your rocker should be and create a peephole there if you want to so you can look through to see if you can find the center of your rockers. If that was the case, if you were going to do it that way, then you probably should have drawn across a center line down your rocker before you got to this point. But I always glue my boards together to create my my 
an inch and a half material, otherwise known as two by whatever. And so I always have that center line already because my two, the two boards are jointed. So I, I just see the line between the two boards. Anywho, um, so I'm going, I'm going to secure each end of the waistline shelf. And I'm not going to put any more screws in it because as I put the rockers where they're supposed to be, they may push or pull on the waistline shelf, which um, theoretically should only benefit the straightness, <laughs> the straightness potential of the waistline shelf. So don't screw the way, don't put any more screws into the waistline shelf at this point. Now I've measured into where I know that the rocker should be because I've measured underneath and then I've measured up above and added three quarters because a rocker is an inch and a half and half of that is three quarters. So I've, I've measured in and I'm marking where that rocker will be. And there's that carpenter square, which I'm not using to square anything. I'm just using it as a straight edge. Ta-da! So if you had made a peephole for yourself, which which I think, you know, is beneficial on my end as a, as a manufacturer of sorts because it will make it much easier for my customers to assemble something that I've put together previously. But when you're putting this together, you, you know, you'll become so familiar with it. Well, it's likely, you know, that you wouldn't even need something like that. You just be confident in your measurements and know that that straight line really doesn't lie. I'm going to put one screw in this rocker to pin it in place. And that way if I end up finding that anything was out of place beneath the platform, I would only have these four screws so far to redo. If I had to reposition something for some horrible reason. Um, <laughs> you know, and there's really nothing you can't fix on this. Don't throw away the project if you have some seemingly fatal error because there really is no such thing. So I've measured in to where my rocker should be. I checked to make sure there was 7 eighths of an inch from the end of the rocker to the end of the platform. Got my straight edge. Drilling four holes in the rocker. And I'm securing everything with two and a half inch screws into the rockers. The waistline shelf gets inch and five eighths screws. I'm sorry that I'm not mentioning that until now, but I'm sure it's on the paperwork somewhere. Okay. So now that I've, um, I'm certain that everything is where it's supposed to be and everything's square and seven eighths inch from the end and an inch and a quarter protruding on each side, I'm going to go along and very carefully drill, pre-drill into the waistline shelf which I'm going to use inch and five eighth screws to fasten to the plywood. But when you do this, you want to be very careful that you're squaring up your drill very well, because this is something you could mess up on if you're not careful. Because that board is not as wide as the rockers. And if you don't pre-drill it, you might, I don't know, you might split the board or something that won't look nice. So just square up the drill and you should be okay. Go ahead and insert all the remaining screws. Inch and five eighths along the waistline shelf, two and a half inch along the rockers. Now you repeat a similar process for the upper shelf. Um, you could have done the upper shelf first if you wanted, but it makes, if you do the upper shelf first, then it's sort of difficult to move the platform around and about on top of the waistline shelf assembly. 
because it's now heavier because it's now attached to the upper shelf. So it's best to do the upper shelf second, regardless of what my paperwork says. Sorry about that. You know, you live and learn, but editing paperwork takes a really, really, really long time. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. But I think the discrepancies are not anything that are terribly awful. So I've positioned the upper shelf by making sure that the, the bullnose, the eight inch bullnose pieces are flush with the end and if at all possible at the same time the distance between the upper shelf and the waistline shelf is the same on the left and right side of the platform. These eye bolts for your mattress straps uh, are about three quarters of an inch, somewhere between a half inch and three quarters of an inch in from the side of the plywood. You don't want to put it so close to the edge of the plywood that it would compromise the edge of the plywood where you might actually bust through. So give yourself a good half inch to three quarters in from the edge of the platform. The platform is wide enough to accommodate your mattress and include this strip of space that's needed all the way around for these bolts and your bedding, a small amount of bedding. And the upper shelf assembly is all secured in place with two and a half inch screws. Use your speed square to square up your little bullnose piece. Well, we've arrived at a very special stage in our Lori wall bed assembly. Please go get your waistline shelf and place what you determined to be the nicest side down, the side that you decided will be facing up on your waistline shelf. You will now face down onto the floor and place it in front of the cabinet centered and now you will have to center your platform by eyeballing it alone, basically. Um, this is your last chance, well not your last chance, but if you would like to at this point and haven't before or did before and would like to do it again, check the squareness of your cabinet. Um, this may not be the best way to do it because your top of your cabinets may the sides of your cabinet, your trim may have come up above the top of your cabinet by a sixteenth of an inch or so, so that wouldn't be the best way to square your cabinet. Better way to do it would be with a speed square on the inner corners. Um, yep, so center your platform best you can. You'll get better at this over time. I'm sorry that I haven't invented a better way of doing this part, but these are just the basics, folks. It's a bed in a box. Here we go. No. Yeah. No. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Yay. We did it. You did it. I did it. Woohoo. Now put her back down and go get somebody to help you hold it up while you secure your latches in place. I usually have a ladder next to the cabinet and place all my hardware on it and then I hold the whole platform up with my hip um, and, then, and then install these. Also if you strapped your... Alright, let me pause this for a second. 
Okay, what I wanted to say was if you strap your mattress on before you go to shut this platform and attach the latches, that mattress will actually help keep that platform closed, okay? So if you don't have someone around to help, um, go get a mattress, strap it on really good with the nylon straps that I made or you made or you bought or a rope um, and secure it, the mattress and then put the platform up and then continue with this next step. Okay, back to the latches. Take your sash part of your satch lock and hold it flat against the bottom of your upper shelf. Take the catch part and place it up against the lash, the sash part. Take your sash part away and pre-drill ever so slightly. Um, we're going to be putting, we're not going to be using the small screws from the package in this half of the lock in the side of the cabinet. We're going to be using a one inch screw. I have purchased washer head one inch screws because they're more attractive than flat head um, drywall screw. Um, and the washer head screws can be ordered from McFeely's.com, which I have no affiliation with, but it's just the place where I like to go find my stuff. Um, and these washer head screws of theirs, they have them in black and bronze and silver. So or steel is what you'll the name you'll find them under so you can get them to match pretty much whatever hardware you've chosen if you've chosen white hardware white latches then you're gonna have to paint your screws if you want them to match I just made a bed that was whitewashed with white latches and I used black washer head screws and that still looked cool so there you have it the catch is almost flush with the inside of the cabinet if it comes in any further than that towards the platform it's, it might catch your platform when you open your platform. You definitely don't want that to happen. So that's what it looks like from the front. The sash part of your lock, you're going to secure using those, those three quarter inch screws from the package. And you really don't need to pre-drill these holes. I'm just making a mark, basically, with this drill. Just getting a place for that screw to get started. You do not need to screw a pre-drilled hole in there to drill a hole in there with your eighth inch drill bit. Some, for whatever reason, and they're pretty much all the same manufacturer, um, where I've advise you to go like Home Depot they pretty much have all the same manufacturer for the sash locks and yet those screws tend to vary by a very small amount like maybe a less than a sixteenth of an inch so some screws are actually long enough to come through the other side of the platform just a little bit but you should be able to clip the tip off easily enough with any kind of pliers with a side cutting device on them. So first insert the screws when they're long and pointy and then take them out and clip the tips off. Now before you put the lower sash locks on, be sure to put your waistline shelf topper board in place. That one right there. You should have picked that up off the ground after we used it as a spacer and placed it on the waistline shelf pretty side up. And we're going to keep it from sliding around by installing a quarter inch wood dowel pins. Dowel pins. You're going to find these uh, anywhere pretty much, any hardware store, and ask your hardware guy for quarter inch dowel pins. If you say dowels, he's gonna go looking for these like five foot long sticks. <clears throat> and if you get a dowel kit, it should come, you need a dowel kit, not just the dowels. Uh, that's the best way to do this. It will come with a quarter inch drill bit that has a little point at the center of it to help it center itself very well. 
right where it needs to be. Right now, I just I just picked a place. I didn't have to measure this hole. I'm just placing it in line with these the other three screws. Um, and I'm drilling it gradually. I don't always do that, but for your benefit, I am um, to show to get the depth exactly where I want it to be. Remember, your upper board is only about three quarters of an inch thick. But you don't want to have to drill into your board, the one, not the one that I'm drilling in right now, but the one that's standing up on end. You don't want to have to drill most of the way through that because you might come flying through the other side of it and then you'll have to use one of those dowels to fill that hole forever. So you, you only want to drill about halfway through that upper board. And halfway through is five-eighths of an inch um, but you really don't even want to have to go that far you should you you don't want to have to drill into that upper board more than a quarter of an inch so you only want a quarter inch of that dowel sticking up above that waistline shelf so right now along with your dowel kit you'll get these little metal pointy plugs and after you've drilled your holes you're gonna put these little metal pointy plugs into those holes temporarily move all your stuff out of the way faster get all the sawdust out of the way little wood pieces and position your topper centered get it like get it right the first time those you might get confused by the marks the pointy things make because those are going to make marks right where they need right where you need to drill your holes so look at each end and make sure it's flush on each end and then put a little bit of pressure right above where those um, place markers are those little steel pointy things pull those out and they have made marks on the underside of that spacer brilliant now don't do this okay don't play <laughs> don't put your spacer and drill it in place right here because well I don't know you might go right through into your board right below these these dowel kits they actually come with like a little rubber uh, washer um, like a like a gasket almost and you put it on that drill bit as a, like you'll put it a quarter inch up the drill bit and it will help, now it won't stop your drill from going any further, but it will help you see very clearly where you want your drill to stop. Now I haven't used one in this demonstration and I probably shouldn't be drilling up here, but you know, I do what I want. And um, so that's all the advice I have on that section. So now is the time to put your dowel pins back in. You might not, I mean, you can put glue in it at this point, but if, if you don't have it right, it's going to make it a little more difficult to get them back out again. If you need to take those dowel pins back out, again, you may need to use um, pliers or, you know, clines or something to pull them out. And it should sandwich together just perfectly like that. It's beautiful. I really like it. Very nice. Now we can put the lower sash locks on, and I do it the same way as I had done the the upper hardware. As you can tell, it was cold when I made this video. It was it was cold. So it's all bundled up. And as I edit this video, I believe it's about 99 degrees down here in good old Alabama. But I'm not complaining. So you use the sash part of the sash lock as a spacer. And I will fast forward through the rest of this.
At this time, please insert the remaining two and a half well, inch watch screws along the mattress Everything on this video is going to be like, why didn't have this one thing? So I couldn't use those kinds of screws. And I'm wearing 40 different outfits because it took me 40 days. <laughs> so, that was really simple. I was in the wilderness for 40 days. <laughs> And there you have it, folks. Um, you probably know that there there are tables that I have invented to go with my Lori wall beds. I, can't, I really can't take credit for tables and hinges, you know, but I just sort of finally figured out how it works best with my beds. So I don't actually have plans or instructions at this time, but I'm showing you images of how I've sort of piece these things together. Those boards that you're looking at now, the shorter pieces will be cut at a diagonal so that the flaps are actually a triangular shape. Um, so again, this is really isn't for instructional purposes, but I'm showing you that I have finally implemented a flip out table. And if you're interested in making one, you can contact me and I will try to uh, create something for you or talk you through it the best that I can so that you can build one too but it requires purchasing of more material and things like that. So it's not included in any paperwork or drawings or instructions that I have at this time. I don't know why I don't have the lower sash locks on this particular model. I'm sure it's just because I was out of them, but I want you to see the table. Um, even unstained, you can, it kind of gives you, a, you can see the parts very well in contrast to the stained bed. So you can, I did end up staining it, as you saw from the previous pictures. And it's very rigid, and I mean, you shouldn't sit on it, but you can eat on it or play cards or put a laptop. Tell your kids not to hang from the end of it. It's not a great idea. And that's it, folks! I'm just going to walk you through some photos real quick. Here are some beds that I've done in the past. Um, these were actually manufactured with the push button locks. I've gone back to making them by hand. Those are customer built vertical twins. It's a horizontal twin, horizontal twin, horizontal twin. Yup. I made this one recently, well, last year. That was customer fabricated. Quilt rod was a nice touch. This white one was built by a customer for my plans. That one was built by a customer for my plans. Um, all different kinds of crazy colors available. I like that one. Safari or sea foam or something. The red's nice. And of course, the table. You can get creative and make these beds represent your style and what you like. That was my prototype. I built it in an 8x8 room. The fifth floor of a condo in Chicago. Give me a call if you uh, need any help or have any questions. And thanks for purchasing my plans and my instructional video with my advanced techniques. <laughs> Bye, y'all!